The Galapagos Islands are like no other place on Earth. Born by fire from volcanic activity deep under the ocean, the islands were slowly colonized by life arriving from the outside. All of its reptiles, all of its birds and insects, a third of the plants and dozens of species of fish are unique to Galapagos, found nowhere else on Earth. Charles Darwin visited the Galapagos on his voyage around South America, a journey that would eventually give birth to his revolutionary ideas on natural selection. Because of their importance, the Galapagos Islands have been enshrined as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Today, travelers visiting the islands have a rich and rewarding experience. Nowhere can you be immersed in the natural world as in Galapagos. Galapagos is the only oceanic archipelago in the world that maintains 95% of its original biodiversity, both native and endemic. 95% is still present today. It's the only place in the world where we have almost all the original vertebrate species still here. As well as being unique, it is the role model for the world still about island restoration, uh, park management, and also these days, sustainable use of resources. But while they still provide a wonderful experience for travelers, behind the scenes, forces are operating that threaten to change the islands forever. In fact, the Galapagos Islands have now been placed on the list of World Heritage Sites in danger. Like all remote oceanic islands, Galapagos developed in a world separated by space and time. This isolation made them unique, but it also made them vulnerable to an ever-growing force. The shrinking of our planet brings formerly isolated species of animals and plants into sudden contact. The islands originally had only about 500 species of plants, which took millions of years to become established. Yet, in a matter of decades, hundreds of new species have arrived. Some of these alien invaders, known to biologists as invasive species, have no natural enemies, and left unchecked, they can transform entire ecosystems. This blackberry, the scientific name is Rubus nivius, comes from the Himalayas. It's one of the worst invasive species that we have in Galapagos. This plant, if you turn your back, you've lost the battle. It just grows up to a couple of meters high and nothing can grow underneath it. It's a pretty impressive plant. But the invasion doesn't stop with plants. At last count, more than 500 alien insect species have arrived in Galapagos. At this laboratory at the Charles Darwin Foundation's research station, biologist Henry Herrera studies a type of fire ant that many biologists believe is the most aggressive insect ever introduced into the islands. A big problem with fire ants is that they displace native insects in Galapagos. Birds and other animals depend on these insects for their food, and without this food, many species will disappear. But perhaps the most dangerous of all invasive species are caused by organisms that can't even be seen. Unfortunately, in Galapagos, two species of mosquitoes have already been introduced onto this island where we are now. One of them is a vector for West Nile virus and avian malaria. Should the disease arrive carried by an infected mosquito, you could well be faced with local extinctions of birds. And so the arrival of these diseases can have a catastrophic effect and we have so much to lose. But among all the invaders from the outside world, one stands out above the rest. As in other parts of the world, humans have brought massive change, in effect, 
compressing time and fast forwarding evolution. When I first came to Galapagos 30, 35 years ago, there was one cargo vessel every six months which came to the islands just bringing essential produce. Today we have a, a vessel every week here, or maybe even two vessels every week here. Um, bringing containers with Coca-Cola, with meat, with everything. And the best way I could put so far Galapagos now is that Galapagos is an open space in every sense. Open for business, open for investors, open for people, open for introduced species, and we need to close that. Tourism is now the main driving force for development in Galapagos. But well-managed, low-impact nature tourism is also the best way to provide lasting protection to the island. Tourism is, um, is part of the problem, but I think it's also part of the solution. It's very important that visitors come to, to Galapagos because each visitor also helps to maintain the park. The park needs visitors and needs good visitors. The greatest support will come through the individual experience here in the islands. If it becomes just another place somewhere on the planet. That is my greatest fear. The indifference to how special this place is and how easy it would be to protect it if everybody did their little bit and cared. If you're interested in visiting the Galapagos Islands, be part of the solution by traveling with a responsible tour operator and support science and conservation.